winner's bracket get to do so. Jace, one of our fellow commentators, doing so tonight. He has been playing excellently. Yeah, and some of the people in Twitch chat are probably like, why is Thrill still on the mic? Aren't they supposed to be subbing out? Well, the guy who's subbing out for me is sitting right there he's next sitting to Cosmo. There. <laughs> we can't We can't put him on because he's still in bracket, and not only in bracket, in winners. He's Quarter. going up against yeah. Gabe. Cosma, one of the Rob sensations of the region, and Jace getting off to a strong start. This is already different than I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> And I know Jace does have issues with this. He, you know, robs the Steves. Which, uh, he came out swinging right now. Which, honestly, you know, it's parts of Rob's game plan. You would think, okay, Zelda can shut it down. Love that Nair to get him off stage as well. Problem is, right, it's not just all about the gyro. Though Cosma is a very gyro-heavy Rob, you can see that he is more than comfortable making use of all of the other insane tools this character has. But Jace, not out of the fight. Yeah. He was in Wake Up Dragon Punch. How about Wake Up Whoop. Kick to the face? Let alone taking that first stock. And that, was a, that was like a Barry Bonds home run swing, right? Just took him out of the park right there. Immediate air dodge to the ledge was beautiful. And Jace, I think the biggest thing that I'm already seeing is that almost every scramble situation that we've seen, he's pulled off a reversal. Yeah. And you got to pull out all the bag of tricks. If you're, you know, low mid-tier character like Zelda going up against a top, top tier. Mm-hmm. And a character like Rob, again, man, and somebody like Cosmo who is on top of things. And Cosmo being a very read-based player, too, you can see that he'll set up these situations where he feels like he's kind of got a good risk-reward to go for something huge, and he's done that with a couple of those up smashes. Despite that, though, playing from behind, and he's going to need one of those crazy combos to get back into things. For sure. But, I mean, the way Jace is swinging. <laughs> so, okay, I've I seen the gyro hit from front, but from the... Below? I, Thrillo, I was playing against Cosmo. He was the one person I was playing friendlies with today before the tournament. And he was talking about how recently, like, that wasn't a thing that he did, all those hits, as Jace does get this back to even. Cosmo wasn't doing those insane big combos. That was really Grayson's field of expertise. But he said he watched Wadi do a video on those combos with, like, re-catching the gyro and tossing it again. And he said, oh, wait, this is actually mad easy. And so he started doing it, and now he's going to be even more feared than he already was. And again, this is a guy who's been on the PR. Yeah. Mr. Consistent, too. I feel like I was talking with Disco about it. Cosmo's oh! one of the least upsettable people in DFW. Yeah, no, he is just, like, a, a ray of sunshine yeah. in that smile just every time you see him. One of the nicest guys out there, but... Can't extend that to the gameplay. He has got a big lead on Jace, who's trying to fight his way back, does do so with that down throw. Scoop him up again, looking for the lightning kick, or how about stomp to forward air, 106%. One more hit from either of these characters might do it. Yeah, Jace is on fire tonight. I see he's trying to scope him out with like an up air. I know he... Wow, wow at that. If I can take a little piece of TK Breezy's book onto the stream, because Jace, is just so on top of things. And look at that. Even Jace is like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm doing this. And Cosmo's just like, wow, that is insane. He's just laughing and having a good time. I mean, Cosmo did the same face we made when that back air got punished with that lightning kick. Mm -hmm. Like, we're like, what? Oh. Usually that's a really safe move that Rob can just throw out, kind of reset afterwards. Right there getting hardest of punishes for it. Uh, and that's been the definition for Jace. Is again, we talked about, like, he's getting a lot of success by fighting out of these scrambles and not really losing those situations. But also, when he gets something started, it just seems to keep on going. Like, he has been just snap on top of every bad decision that somebody's made. But I have to see him fight against Rob in his favorite home, Town and City, with those close side blast zones. And Cosmos also loved the stage for many reasons, not the least of which is he also loves to combo off of those platforms. Yeah, and you were talking about read base that Cosmo plays, almost reading that up smash mm -hmm. from that disadvantage. Oh, my! Dude, he hit me with those so many times when we were playing earlier. He would toss the gyro down or he would read an air dodge and then always forward smash in the correct direction. And that's something that I feel like I've almost never seen him do, but it's just another piece of the playbook that is making him scarier and scarier every time I watch him. Yeah. I mean, that's what's beautiful about this age of Smash is there's so many resources to learn about your character. Like just from, you know, pro players. Never mm -hmm. been more connected to pro players. Yeah, like we were saying, right? Cosmo picked up some of his stuff from there. He is able to live the lightning kick. It is across the stage, so it's not going to be enough to take him out. At 126, this is the survivability he's needed, and Jace's mash 
Not enough, although he is able to air dodge away, and even low profiles the up smash, yeah. finally getting that stock on board. Yeah. Kazuka kind of thinking to himself, there's a lot of weird act interactions happening right now, you know? Not reading the air dodge. Just it's, kinda... it's so weird. This is a slugfest, and you would think that this matchup wouldn't be a slugfest if you perhaps play on Wi-Fi, but these characters offline go nuts. Yeah. Cosmo able to pick up that down smash, reading that movement down from Jace. The landings have definitely been getting Jace in some hot water a couple of times here. Cosmo really blowing that up to take this full stock lead. Yeah, Jace has been telling me that he tries to use teleportation, like kind of to reset neutral, put oh himself my. in a separate advantage state. But Cosmo's up to that. You know, he's willing to meet him where he's going to be. Mm -hmm. Setting up the Phantom, not able to get a follow-up off of it, even space the Nair correctly. Cosme able to maneuver around the Din's fire as well, but again, the tip of the sword. Yeah, you just see just how deep these traps go. Wow. I mean, just great mash there. And I mean, Town City, even with that up... Oh, my God. It's, that was like watching a car crash in slow motion. Not because Jace got, like, totally demolished in that sense of the word, but you saw the gyro get set up. He didn't have his double jump. He's a floaty character, and you just went, well, down tilt into the gyro will knock him back to work, and then it was already done. No, I mean, you're talking about car crashes. It's like pinball. <laughs> <laughs> Except there's only one area you go to, and that's to the blast zone. Yeah. And well, that's that's how I played pinball. Yeah, right? I was just like, oh, that that box is worth a 1,000 points. I'm going to yeah. keep hitting it there. Yeah, and Cosmo really good at that. And I was talking to Disco earlier. I've been to those game threes against Cosmo, and they're scary. Yeah. He's, he's learned so much about those first couple games. There's a chance where we could see a really hard win from Cosmo in this game. Because they've been slugfest, like you are saying. You yeah. wouldn't think that, because not a lot of zoners have these boxing tools. Yeah, sure, you have Rob, you have Pac-Man, but Zelda not known for that. Well, and I think that Jace is showing off, right, how good it is when Zelda gets up close and when she's able to get something started. The question, obviously, always is, how do you get them started? And Cosmo's continually been applying offense to Jace to stop him from being able to do that, right? And to that point, we haven't seen a ton of crazy combos, and you talked about it, right? When you go to a game three against somebody like Cosmo who shows off that adaptation, it shines oh. in the offense just like that. Yeah. And he's adapting because the Knight has been catching him uh, jumping from ledge. Mm -hmm. And that's been taking a lot of early stocks where normally, you know, Cosmo would live. But right now, living to 122, and I don't know if he's going to be in, like, kind of range to get lightning kick or anything like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Certainly anywhere near the ledge, a lightning kick will be able to do it without a oh, shield just yeah. like that, which is something that Jace looks for, right? He will definitely try to put himself in positions where you think he's vulnerable, you go for a big hit, but the shield's already out, and then he can get that three lightning kick out of shield, but he's going to have to find his way back into this game down in a big deficit and in a place where Cosmo can definitely get a kill combo out of basically nowhere. And I know that's what Jace struggles in. Jace doesn't really like to be, like, juggled continuously from below. And Rob can do that Ooh. with that up air. Certainly that he can, but Jace trying to keep things grounded as best he can again. Even just landing out of a short hop, Cosmo's able to anti-air him there. And again, that goes to Zelda being a bit more of a floaty character. That's also helping Cosmo hit some big combos, escaping the jab board or eating another lightning kick but still working with a relatively big lead. Yeah, that transcendent laser coming in clutch for him. Doesn't matter who's there, going right through straight to Zelda. And Jace trying to set up some big traps at the ledge, oh, misses the no. tech, he's back! And even the lightning kick with the reversal, catching Cosma just trying to get his bearings. This is the last stock game three. I'm saying, this is it. You know, winner gets a ride to semis, and you do not want to go into losers who we got skeleton. Yanni and a Dammy going random, which is still scary. Skelly's not even in losers oh, yet, sorry. bro. Uh, Skelly's yeah. still in winners. Yeah, ja Yanni. <laughs> Back throw? No, he's going for the down throw for the mix-up. Catches Jace, not mashing. He was probably trying to wait and hold for the DI on the back throw, but Cosmo picking the right option there, immediately letting that up smash rip, and he is going to close out the set 2-1, to one, but in pretty heart-stopping fashion. And we've seen throughout, uh, throughout that set where he wasn't really mashing, and so he was trying to read it with the up air, but... Right there saying, just let me just do up smash. Yeah, and I mean, 
Cosmo's an up smasher. Yeah. I think that anybody who's watched the stream before He's like, oh, you're going to let me up smash this time around? I'll I, do it. I'm going to, because he'll do it when you don't let him up yeah, smash. And then exactly. he'll still find a way. We saw a couple of times where Reed's either connected or barely whiffed, and it seemed like it was a good option to cover some stuff. But that is, of course, the poetic way yeah. for Cosmo set to end us with an up smash. So he'll be moving on to winner semis, where I believe on the other side, Skeleton and Atomic will be playing. I think that was Grand Finals of Odyssey this weekend yeah. as well. So that'll be a fun rematch to see. And I believe the other side involves one t -Lock Shokyo, who beat Dambi, who did go random tonight. You got eyes so on the back a, of your head? There's you a could, bit of a You could see Shokyo bit of a sitting down. No, I, I looked at the bracket before <laughs> I sat down because I was intrigued to see where the tournament would go. Yeah, Shokyo just sat down with Shokyo.